one of the programming terms that confuses many software engineers whether they are beginners or experienced is concurrency versus parallelism in this video let's discuss concurrency versus parallelism with some real world and code examples also let's explore what concurrency versus parallelism means in the context of distributed systems talk about modern programming languages that support these concepts weigh in pros and cons and figure out when to use each hi there welcome to tech and career bites i'm a software professional with over two decades of experience including seven years in leadership roles at a global product based organization in the world of programming we often hear the terms concurrency and parallelism they can be pretty confusing because while they sound similar they actually mean different things let's dive in and explore these concepts concurrency is all about handling multiple tasks at once but here is the thing it does not necessarily mean doing them at the same time it refers to managing multiple tasks often using a single processor to switch between tasks imagine a single cashier at a grocery store managing multiple customers the cashier handles one customer at a time but switches between scanning items processing payments and bagging groceries the cashier is not helping all customers simultaneously but is efficiently managing multiple tasks let's quickly discuss the pros and cons of concurrency we can then shift gears to discuss parallelism with concurrency cpu usage is optimized it improves user experience by keeping applications responsive concurrency is great for io bound tasks as cpu can switch tasks instead of waiting for io completion concurrency can be tricky because managing state and synchronization between tasks is complex with concurrency there are risks of race conditions and deadlocks which can lead to inconsistencies debugging and testing can be challenging with concurrency parallelism takes things a step further it is about performing multiple tasks simultaneously this requires multiple processors or cores working at the same time think of it like having multiple cashiers at the grocery store with each cashier handling their own customer at the same time now let's discuss pros and cons of parallelism we will soon be discussing concurrency and parallelism in java so stay tuned parallelism significantly boosts the performance of cpu bound tasks it scales well with multi core processors parallelism reduces processing time for large computations parallelism requires more system resources like more number of cpus parallelism can be complex to divide tasks into parallelizable subtasks hadoop map reduce can be an example of this parallelism might lead to inefficient resource use if tasks are not evenly distributed among the processors let's explore when concurrency is recommended and when to use parallelism use concurrency when there are tasks involving waiting like io operations concurrency is recommended when we need to keep applications responsive as in the case of graphical user interfaces use concurrency for tasks that are independent but need to share cpu time this can happen in both single core and multi core systems use parallelism when tasks are cpu bound and can be broken down into independent subtasks parallelism is recommended when we have multi core processors ready to handle multiple threads when performance is critical such as in scientific computations or real time simulations parallelism is recommended over concurrency in a multi processor or multi core system 
Each core handles multiple tasks using concurrency. This way, multi-core systems support both concurrency and parallelism. So, it's not always a case of either concurrency or parallelism. They can coexist. Many modern programming languages support both concurrency and parallelism. Here are a few. Java is big on both concurrency and parallelism. Let's first discuss concurrency in Java with a code example. Java uses threads extensively and the Java util concurrent package is packed with tools like executors, thread pools and concurrent data structures. Examples include blocking queue for thread safe operations, semaphore for controlling resource access and countdown latch for coordinating tasks. These tools focus on managing task execution and ensuring proper coordination between threads rather than parallel execution across multiple cores. Executors manage a pool of threads that can run tasks concurrently on a single processor and in parallel on multi-core systems. The availability of all these tools makes Java a solid choice for building responsive and efficient applications. Java also does a great job with parallelism. The fork join framework introduced in Java 7 is designed for tasks that can be split into smaller subtasks. Java 8 brought in parallel streams, making it even easier to process collections concurrently. While working on the system design of any distributed system, we often hear about the number of concurrent users in the non-functional requirements. But do we mean concurrency or parallelism here? When we refer to concurrent users in distributed systems, we mean the system can handle multiple user interactions at the same time. This involves both concurrency and parallelism. Using concurrency, the system efficiently manages multiple tasks by quickly switching between them. For example, a web server handling multiple HTTP requests simultaneously using asynchronous I.O. And using parallelism, Tasks are performed simultaneously across multiple processors or machines. For example, a distributed database processes a large query by dividing the workload across multiple nodes, as in the case of Hadoop or Spark. Concurrency and parallelism are powerful tools in the world of programming. Knowing the difference and when to use each can help us write efficient and performant applications. Java, with its strong support for both, is a great language to explore these concepts. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting tech topics. Do check out our other videos on software performance optimization case studies, system design, coding, big data and career growth. My name is Rupa and I thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time.